Hi guys, in this video I will take a look at the build quality of two Chinese switch mode power supplies that I bought from eBay for less than 10 pounds. I did win them in auctions, but usual buy it now prices aren't much higher. Usually you can get these for maybe 15 pounds total. I have bought three similar power supplies before, they were dirt cheap as well, and all of them had such low build quality that I had to do some repair work before I could even plug it in. It was just too dangerous to use them as is, but let's see how these are. Actually I don't remember the ratings, so let's check that first. This one is 5V 5A, input and output are on the same screw terminal. Like usually, and this looks kinda crooked. Actually, it's just that sticker which hasn't been aligned correctly. The edge of the case is there, so yeah, the PCB is straight. That was problem with one of previous power supplies. The PCB was very crooked. One corner was about half an inch higher than others, and there were some other problems as well. But biggest problems were inside the case, so let's open this one up. So there's one screw on the back, one near the screw terminals, and then there's this sticker that needs to be removed or cut. Then the top half of the case slides off, and we can take a better look at the PCB and the components. So on this side of the PCB, no big problems. Couple of components have little bit longer legs. They could have been mounted closer to the PCB, but that won't be a problem. Yeah, this PCB design is very similar to other Chinese power supplies. No matter if the rating is 10 watts, 100 watts, 200 watts, they are usually based on the same circuit. They are just a little bit bigger when the power rating goes up. Moving on, there are a couple of screws that need to be removed, so the PCB can be removed from the case. And we can then look at the build quality of the bottom side of the PCB. Can we find solder balls on the PCB? Are all the components soldered to the board correctly? And so on. Some of the components have long legs which have been bent down so they are almost touching other traces but there's solder mask and let's see is it primary? No, the primary is in this side so the components are on the secondary side so low voltage side. Then let's see, so the live is here, the separation between the primary and secondary is here, this is ground, so it could be wider, and this trace goes between the opto-isolator's legs, maybe it could have been routed from other place, leaving this gap between opto-isolator's legs a little bit wider. So overall when it comes to build quality of this power supply, there are no huge mistakes that I have seen on previous power supplies. The gap between primary and secondary could be wider, and also components on this feedback circuit have a little bit longer legs than they need to have. That is a problem, but not a huge one, and it can be easily fixed by clipping the legs. These power supplies are low quality ones and I can't recommend these to anyone, but I was pleasantly surprised about the build quality, it was better than expected. But how about this bigger one? Let's take it apart, but first let's see the ratings, because I have no idea which one this was. So again, sticker on the side says this one is 24 volt, 5 amp, and naming convention is the same, S power rating, voltage rating. This one has two positive outputs and two negative outputs, they are connected together. And this also has this plastic flap over the screw terminals, which wasn't present on the smaller one. Otherwise this looks similar to the smaller one, just a bigger one. And once you have taken apart one of these power supplies, you know how to take apart all of these two screws and a sticker holding the top half of the case. And once those have been removed, the top half can be slid off, and you can see the components on the PCB. And like you can see, this is very similar to a smaller one. Basically the same circuit scaled up. To release the PCB, there are two screws holding components against the sides of the case, and once those have been removed, there's one screw holding the PCB to the bottom of the case. And then we can take a look at the PCB's bottom side. 
I don't see huge problems in this either. Same thing about the legs on the feedback circuit, they are a little bit long. There's no trace going between the optisolator's legs and there are no solar bars on the primary side or the secondary side for that matter. I don't see many problems with this one. There's this one contact that hasn't been soldered properly. You can see the hole in there, but the component is actually soldered, so that is not a fatal error. And now that I have this open, I can easily fix it by soldering it again. But if that is the biggest problem with this power supply, I'm happy with this one as well. So I bought these two power supplies to show why you should not buy these power supplies, but the low quality that I was expecting to see wasn't there. The build quality or quality control errors that I have seen before aren't present in these two individuals. But like always when buying something for too cheap to be true prices, it's flip of the coin, do you get a decent one or bad one, and these are mains powered power supplies, and bad one can be dangerous, so I do not recommend these, even though these weren't as bad as some previous ones. I would like it if you could show your support by hitting the like button, leaving your thoughts about cheap power supplies in the comment section, and subscribing if you haven't already. See you in next video. Thanks. Bye.